It's March 2021 on a Monday afternoon, and this past weekend, Shannon and I relocated to Coronado National Forest just east of Tucson, Arizona. Today was a bit of a whirlwind, and it didn't go down quite as I expected. It all started last night. We were sitting inside the Winnebago Revel right here on the mountain, right where I have RNG parked now, where just for a split second I heard the water pump come on. And then five minutes later, another split second, the water pump comes on. That's normal when you're taking a shower, flushing the toilet, or using the kitchen sink, but it is not normal when you're not using any water fixtures whatsoever. That little split second of water pump means that the system is losing pressure, and that means water is coming out somewhere. So I got out the flashlight and started peering behind cabinets, looking for leaky water lines. I looked under the bench seat, which houses a lot of components, including water and electrical, and there it was. There was a slow but distinct drip of water coming out of a hot water line that passes into a heat exchanger. The first thing that I did was turn off the water pump and depressurize the system so it would slow down the leak, we could sleep on it and figure it out in the morning. It was already 11 o'clock at night. Bright and early, pretty much right when they opened, we took the van to La Mesa RV in Tucson, went to the service department, and told them what was going on and asked if they could get us in today. While we were at La Mesa, very serendipitously, they had a Storyteller Overland Beast Mode, which is a camper van that's in the same class as the Winnebago Revel. The next five minutes of footage is from a tour that Storyteller was giving the La Mesa sales crew, and I just happened to be there to record it. For more detailed information about the van, go to StorytellerOverland.com. Okay, so Tim is coming, and he'll explain more of the in-depth stuff with you guys. But the basic is, this is our highest end. This is our beast mode. It's our highest trim level. The Stealth has like a matte black wheel, but it's the same wheel. And then this has the uh, Ryan, black Rhino, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, wheels. And then it has Agile Rider Improvement Package, which basically it's just, it's a stiffer package. It's made for this vehicle. And then on top of that, we added the uh, the Alphans uh, plate. So basically you can mount uh, cargo boxes. Um, you can mount uh, like maxi traxies. And then on the other side, it's got a full size spare tire with a spare tire carrier. So it opens up the bottom for whatever you want, if you want to add uh, upgrades or whatever. So inside this is, I think it's 11 and a half kilowatts or 11 kilowatts of energy. So it'll charge up the batteries. Yeah, so the engine charges the battery system. Is there a separate alternator generator? There is a complete separate alternator and inverter. Okay. So we have the S-bar heating system. Okay. It'll pull all the way until you have a quarter tank and then it won't it won't kill your tank. Sure. And then the other thing is where you can see where like an open platform, so right. the beds come up. This bed goes down, or this bed goes down first, this bed goes down. You have six foot four on the back and six foot two on the front because the flares kind of flare out. Right. Um, and then it actually has two showers. So there's a shower right here in hot and, hot and cold water. Right. And then there's also a shower right here. So this pulls up. Obviously, we have all our goodies in here. So this drops down. And then the shower pulls out. Yeah, so basically, instead of having a contained shower, right. you know, if you're washing your hair like this, I mean, I'm probably like five, four, four feet across, you know, if you're in a contained shower, you're doing this. So the idea is it's an open shower. It's a non-stick like material. So when you're in here and it's wet, you're not getting it stuck to you. And you can, you actually have more room than a traditional shower in most RVs. You know, when I first, when I first started uh, and I saw this, cause I came on a little later than some of the guys, you know, I was like, I was like, I don't know about that. Sure, that right. feels like a lot of work, but you know, it just took me two minutes to take it up and two minutes to take it down. Right. And then it dries, it'll dry in about 45 minutes. Right. You, you wouldn't even know. And then the shower pan goes back down. So the cool thing about the shower pan, uh, it's, it goes straight to the gray water. So you can use it as a shower pan or, you know, I have the van, all the vans come with the covers. Right. So that goes to the front. And I use it as storage. 
Um, and then the other thing, I guess I'm gonna swap back to exterior. This is air. Right. So the beast mode actually has onboard air. So there's a chuck on the rear and a chuck on the front. Oh, and you wow. turn it on and you can air down your tires and then air them back up. Gotcha. So right here is our cooktop. It's an induction cooktop. So when it's on, it doesn't get hot. You can have it right here or come around to the front and we actually placed a nice handy dandy electrical oh, nice. so you can actually cook outside. So yeah, you can do that. And then on top of that, you have your sink and your refrigerator. This is, it opens all the way out here. So if you want to grab a beer from outside, you can get to it. So a lot of vans, they, they hold more than one people. And we use this as a, uh, I use it mostly as a chill zone. But you can take this off and you can drop this down and then fold this up. The groove lounge. The groove lounge. So now you're grooving. Now you got two beds. Yeah. And then also, because it has all the energy, we also have a microwave. Okay. So some people use it, some people don't. Um, I use it. When we're on road trips, you get like a nice like bacon, egg, and cheese from the gas station, warm that thing up. Perfect. What about um, the crapper? What it has is it has a portable cassette toilet. Okay. Uh, it generally stays in the shower pan. Right. Uh, but again, it's a cassette toilet, so it's easily removable. Some people will say they use it all the time. Some people don't at all. But we get we you know it's a full RV. Gotcha. So that's that's the goal. Is everything is self-contained. The storyteller was a strong consideration of mine before I got the Revel. The two vans are in the same class and very similar in capability but the Storyteller is slightly more utilitarian. And one thing I like about it in particular is that there are very few low-hanging systems and components in the undercarriage of the vehicle compared to the Winnebago Rebel. The reason that I didn't go with the Storyteller, I already have the Jeep, which is extremely capable and well-suited to go deep into the backcountry. So I wanted the van to have more of a bias toward living comfort. So I have no regrets about buying the Revel, but after seeing the Storyteller Overland Beast Mode in the flesh, that van has presence. It is very cool. You're up. Nice. And the more weight you put in your front foot, the more momentum you get. How long does it take you guys to get proficient? Uh, I mean, probably a full day, then you're pretty comfortable, and it's like a... A full day? <laughs> there you go, man. Both feet. Both feet. <laughs> It's Tuesday morning and I'm back on the move, currently heading south out of Tucson. Back to the issue of the water leak in the Revel. La Mesa RV service department found a broken fitting attached to a heat exchanger beneath the bench seat. They replaced the fitting, put everything back together, and sent us on our way. Good as new. It only took a few hours and it didn't cost a dime because everything was still under warranty. Now I've got the bench open and I'm looking at this thing and there's a water temperature regulator that is just floating there. It's suspended only by the PEX water lines and it's able to wobble back and forth freely. The water line from the regulator goes into the heat exchanger and that was the fitting that was broken. So you have to think about it, if we're taking the Revel on these really rough dirt roads and occasional two tracks, this regulator is wobbling back and forth constantly, and this constant movement absolutely has to fatigue the fittings. And I'd bet you any money that that is the exact reason that that fitting failed on us. So I did something very simple and just attached a metal zip tie to the top of the regulator 
just to restrict the back and forth movement from wobbling. I feel like the regulator should be much better secured so it's not allowed to wobble freely like that, especially on the water lines, but my quick and dirty solution should do the job. This week I'm making my way down toward Bisbee, Arizona, and I'm trying to get there via backcountry route, although I'm not having much luck so far. I think this road dead ends at private property, so although this is a rough track, I didn't air down my tires yet because I'm expecting to have to air back up again. I think I'm going to have to return to the highway. No dice. Looks like we're backtracking to the highway. All right, Tucson to Bisbee using as many backcountry routes as possible. I don't think I'm going to find a single cohesive backcountry route because here's Tucson, here I am down near I-10, Tombstone is here, and then Bisbee is down here. You can see by the color coding on Gaia GPS that the green is national forest, a lot of the high elevation roads are closed, purple is state trust land. Yellow is BLM, and white is usually private, residential, ranches. There's a lot of different land types between here and Bisbee, so I'm ultimately just going to have to explore and piece something together. So I'm going to backtrack, travel south into Coronado National Forest, and then when I get farther south, I'll work my way east toward Bisbee. I am in a BLM conservation area and I just encountered an information kiosk that had a public use map. And when I encounter a map like that, I always take a picture of it with my phone. So now I know where all the approved tracks are and also designated camping areas. Unfortunately, the weather is taking a turn. It is drizzling, overcast, and a bit windy out. Empire Ranch Headquarters. The Empire Ranch has been a working cattle ranch since the 1870s. The ranch headquarters you see today has undergone several phases of expansion, particularly in the late 1800s. This is a collaborative project of the BLM and the Empire Ranch Foundation, whose mission is to protect, preserve, and sustain the Empire Ranch historical buildings and landscape as an outstanding Western heritage and historical center.
I smell ice cream. I'm at Trails End in Coronado National Forest, and that was a rather nice varied track, 12 miles in length one way. It terminated at about 5,400 feet in this small clearing on the side of the mountain. And I would spend the night here, except that it's not remotely flat, although there are the remnants of an old stone fire ring. Four o'clock in the afternoon, the skies cleared up a good bit, but the wind is still unrelenting. A few miles back, I marked a couple potential campsites, and they're a little bit more exposed, but they're nice and flat. So I'm going to get in the Jeep and backtrack and set up there. Um, I just put a bunch of things in here. Uh, two types of cheeses, salsa, turkey. Um, I did butter 
the bread on both sides. This side got a little toasty. I'm just not sure that riding around the world in a train is the best and most practical way to survive a cold apocalypse. Perpetual motion is one thing. Someday we might have the technology for an engine to run indefinitely. But what about the track, man? I mean, plate tectonics, continental drift, how many millimeters to and fro does each continent move every single year? I don't think a high-speed space train could make it one revolution around the Earth without derailing. This is more like it. I go through phases with how I like my coffee, and I've been on a creamer kick lately. For the past two years or more, I've been having my coffee black, just like that. But I tried this white chocolate mocha creamer from Starbucks, and also Delight has a white chocolate mocha creamer too, and I just can't get enough of it. All right, I'm about ready to stow the camper and go mobile. I know I was targeting Bisbee, Arizona, but I am going to keep that open-ended. First, I'm currently positioned 11 miles in along a primitive track, and I'm going to try to go out another way to the south that's closer to pavement, but if I can't get through that way for any reason, I'm going to have to go 15 miles or farther back to get out, and that might take the better part of the day. Also, I'm looking at Gaia GPS and Bisbee, to the southeast doesn't have quite as much public land around it as the southwest, that direction, but there's also mountains and higher elevations. It's already Wednesday morning and I want to cover a lot more ground. I'm just not sure where I'm going to ultimately end up. All right, I did find a shorter way off the mountain to the south. The base map on Gaia GPS did not show a complete route, so I wasn't sure. But I checked satellite view using Google Maps, and it looked like there was a track. And indeed, there were markers along the way that specified designated route. So I'm aired up, back on pavement for the time being, and we are all good. The ARB Twin Air takes about 15 minutes to air up 35 inch tires from 15 PSI to 35 PSI. I love that thing. I feel like it's a really great value for a high performing bolt on air compressor.
Heading back off pavement, happened upon this great campsite in a grove of trees. It's right off the road, so it's not very private, but this is lovely. It wasn't just that first spot that had the good dispersed campsite. I'm about four miles in and there are a lot of nice designated dispersed campsites. A bunch of the sites are occupied right now in early March, so I imagine during peak season it's probably very busy, or even on weekends. Dinner time in Coronado National Forest. I found a great campsite up the mountain a ways. I'm hoping that all these trees and the vegetation will help break up the wind a little bit. I'm right next to a picturesque stream and also the Arizona Trail, which is a hiking trail that runs south to north or possibly north to south, whichever way you happen to be going.
This campsite checks a lot of boxes. It's charming and unspoiled, four-wheel drive access, and running water. So we have an infinite water supply in a fairly dry region. This truly isn't a fast process, but it is fast enough. It's a small price to pay for what is essentially an unlimited water supply. With it being Thursday, this is the time of week that I prepare to edit this week's video. And once every few weeks or so, I have to perform hard drive maintenance because I import all my memory cards from my cameras to my computer to edit the video on the computer, but it does not take very long for my computer's hard drive to fill up. This is a 13 inch MacBook Pro with a one terabyte hard drive and every week I record about five hours of raw footage, which amounts to between 70 and 80 gigs. Although my camera equipment is capable of shooting in 4K, for portability's sake, I limit myself to compressed high definition video, 1080, 60 in an MP4 format. The challenge with 4K is that it consumes exponentially more storage space and requires considerably more processing power to edit. So when the hard drive on my MacBook Pro is close to getting full, and right now it has 100 gigabytes of free space, then I transfer the last few weeks of video to my external USB hard drive. Right now it takes about a year's worth of recording to fill up a 4 terabyte external hard drive with raw footage. It takes a little bit of time to move a few hundred gigs of data from the computer's solid state hard drive to the mechanical external hard drive. So I'm going to get this transfer started, give it about an hour, and we should be good to go. It's Thursday afternoon and I am mobile. I just found cell service and got in touch with Shannon. She established a base camp for herself and the Revel and now I am en route to meet her. I'm probably about two hours out. My destination was Bisbee, Arizona and the surrounding area, but I quickly became very distracted by Coronado National Forest. Coronado National Forest consists of a series of vast parcels all across southern Arizona. They're not all interconnected, and everyone that I've seen so far seems to have a very unique personality with its own unique features. This particular parcel has a wealth of dispersed camping opportunities. It doesn't matter if you're a backpacker or you're towing a fifth wheel camper, there is an idyllic place for you here to spend the night. The forest roads here will make great use of your ground clearance and your four wheel drive system. And to top it all off, the backcountry here feels very unspoiled and pristine. I'm gonna call that a wrap for the week. I usually record my wrap up on the good camera, but the battery for my fuzzy mic died, so I'm using my GoPro on the dashboard instead. I hope you all enjoyed this week's adventure, and I will catch up with you next week.